Hi guys, it is already February 25, 2019, soon to be March. Wow, this year is really flying by. I have bookmarked so many articles and I'm going to try to post videos on many of them. I certainly couldn't do all of them because that's how many I have bookmarked and why did I not just post videos then? Because so much is happening on a daily basis and other things, um, well, in my mind, were more important and yada, yada, yada. So I'll just go through these articles and show you how utterly insane and tyrannical our world has become. China's social credit system now bans millions from trains, planes, Oh, God. The social credit system in China will soon um, be rolled out for every, every person in China. Every citizen will have a personal score, 1.4 billion. Um, so far, they have this social credit system, I think, for 30 million. Um, but millions of Chinese individuals and businesses have been labeled untrustworthy on an official blacklist banning them from activities such as uh, accessing financial markets or traveling by air or train oh they have a lot of punishments it's a trail of punishments if you do not get a high credit score social credit score then you could be destroyed it's based on positive and negative scores for individuals and uh, corporations or companies. They don't take into account circumstances, individual circumstances. That's why, you know, details, so many don't care about details. You've got to dig into the details to understand the truth, to get to the truth. So you don't get to the truth um, if you're not looking at the details. You're getting to something that you want to believe or whatever, but yeah, so an individual or a company falls on hard times. They were always trustworthy, but they fell on hard times. So they they paid a bill late. Bad score. That puts you into the negative. What happens? You dig the hole deeper. You don't help help them get out of that bad circumstance. You dig the hole deeper with these kinds of punishments, just like we do here, the credit scoring system. If you do not have a good credit score, you can't rent an apartment. Ah. And that will really add to the homeless list. So 3.59 million Chinese enterprises were added to the official credit worthy, worthiness blacklist last year, banning them from bidding on projects, uh, accessing security markets, taking part in land auctions, issuing corporate bonds. Dig that hole deeper. Don't help them get out. Nope, dig it deeper because we don't care about human beings. We only care that they behave the way government wants them to. YouTube begins shutting down revenue for anti-vaccine videos. Facebook announced that it would begin exploring ways to fight anti-vaccine messaging uh, after receiving a letter from Adam Schiff, Democrat in California, Schiff and others of his ilk are doing their best to blame the measles outbreak in the United States on social media systems that offer anti-vaccine messaging in their recommended reading and groups areas. This was in Bloomberg. The first result under a search for vaccines on YouTube is a video showing a middle ground. Wow. Oh my God, a middle ground. Mm. Uh, a middle ground debate between supporters of vaccines and those who think they're dangerous. The fourth result is the first episode of a popular anti-vaccine documentary, The Truth About Vaccines. 
it has almost 1.2 million views. Well, you got to put a stop to that, right? Got to put a stop to truth circulating. Anti-vaccine messaging, those are the people who do research, gather the facts and evidence, and they put it together, and then they do a video and post it showing how dangerous are vaccines. Well, we have to destroy them. We can't let this go on. So YouTube will take a two-pronged approach to reducing the exposure of this type of messaging. First demonetizing the videos, then adding a stern warning from the World Health Organization. Yes, YouTube on Friday said it would prevent channels that promote anti-vax content from running advertising. Uh, and this, according to YouTube, it falls under its policy prohibiting the monetization of videos that are dangerous and harmful. Dangerous and harmful content. Truth. Yeah, it is dangerous. And it is harmful for those who have an agenda. And the truth gets in the way of that agenda. Depopulation. Get the population sick. Ooh, Big Pharma makes a lot of money that way. Money, 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 money. Well, it's going to be adding to uh, its demonetizing the videos. Vaccine hesitancy. Yes, the World Health Organization. I posted a video a while ago. World Health Organization has decided that anti-vaxxers are to be included in their top 10, the top 10 global health threats. Anti-vaxxers now are, are like Ebola that was included in that list. Ebola, anti-vaxxers. All right, well, if we are that dangerous, why aren't we being exterminated immediately? Why do all of this wiggling around? Get rid of us if that's the truth, that we're that dangerous, like Ebola. They're getting rid of the truth. They don't want people to have the truth. And yeah, I still get comments from people. Well, YouTube can do what it wants. It's a private company. Well, it is in name. Like Google and Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, what a brilliant guy. Yeah. Well, if you do some research and look, guys, you know, I had plenty of videos, Kafka Insta World. I think I've even posted on Never Lose Truth. Uh, these are not private corporations. These are not private companies. These are government. You know, um, the Pentagon, NSA, uh, it's, they're not private. And you can check out, if you don't know anything about it, by just clicking on this hyperlink a direct pipeline and find out that YouTube and Google and Facebook this is the platform right here social media where they're collecting so much data on all of us and wait until wait until we get that social credit scoring system going here in the United States anybody who speaks the truth will have access to nothing all of you who lie and are, yay, government, USA, 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 military, and you're pro-vaccine, pro-GMO, pro-everything that's dangerous to us, you'll get a high credit score, a high social credit score. U.S. moving special forces equipment to the Venezuelan border. This, according to... Uh, the uh, Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, they affirmed that the U.S. government is moving special forces to the borders of Venezuela, along with military equipment, and U.S. government and U.S. companies, uh, with the help of 
some NATO allies are seeking to buy arms and ammunition in Eastern uh, European countries to arm the Venezuelan opposition. Well, I haven't, I've seen videos I've, on this, but, you know, there's no way really to verify this. But do we need verification considering that this is how the United States plays? No, we've seen this time and time again. The United States, they fund, they train, they support, they arm the opposition forces in countries where they want regime change. Syria is a good example. I see this picture. Venezuela's Guaido meets Pence in anti-Maduro strategy talks, and I just see evil just coming right out of that picture. Disgusting, despicable Mike Pence, Guaido. They meet. Mike Pence, again, has to say, 100% support from Donald Trump. Guaido, we support you. 100% because we've been trying to get into this country and take control over it for two decades, okay? Now is the time we finally succeed. So, we don't care about Venezuelans. We don't care that Venezuelans elected in a fair and just democratic process Maduro. We don't care about that. We're going to lie up the wazoo to get what we want. Yay! Aren't we great? And they say such outrageous things. Guaido warned that indulging Maduro would be a threat to all of America. Yeah, Maduro, he's the threat. No, this is the threat. This is the disgusting, evil threat staring right back at you. Let's face it, the U.S. Constitution has failed. Well, I didn't get too far into this because it really annoyed me from the start. Now, I want to say this. I had a conversation with a subscriber a couple of days ago, and I think it was regarding um, uh, this article here, Charles Hugh Smith. And can't quote me on this, but I think... Charles U. Smith came back and wrote another piece saying, okay, wait a second. I think you're right. It wasn't the U.S. Constitution that failed. We failed. Yeah, that's it. So, let's face it, the U.S. Constitution has failed. Title by itself. Error. It's the people that failed. The Constitution didn't fail. It was the people that interpreted that Constitution, they sitting with those black robes, Supreme Court. It was the government officials who violated the Constitution. And it was we, the people, yes, the American people, who did squat to protect it. Despite the anything goes quality of American culture, one thing remains verboten to say publicly the U.S. Constitution has failed. The reason why this painfully obvious fact cannot be discussed publicly is that it gives the lie to the legitimacy of the entire status quo. Well, yeah, the Constitution is dead. Americans just go on like they have one. Uh, but it's the failure of the people. Yeah, the great American experiment. Failure. Constitution itself, if it was respected, if it was honored, this country would have been completely different. Court rules school can use electric shock as punishment for special needs students. Wow. Aren't we just such a caring and compassionate and loving country? Family court judge Catherine Field denied a motion to stop the use of electric shock on disabled students, a form of punishment that has been controversial for years after news of the practice first reached the public in 2013 when a video surfaced of an 18-year-old student receiving dozens of shocks 
for refusing to take off his jacket. Something's very wrong with this woman. Something's very wrong with this country. We are. I'm sorry. Uh, we are not the people we think we are. And until we face the fact that we are very sick and need healing, we are going to continue this kind of um, practice. Children in schools, in families, abuse of children. It's gotten worse and worse, not better. So something's wrong with the adults. Wow. Well, the spy who bonked me. Sex bots could crush human limbs and spy on you for the government as fears grow over rogue robot lovers. Keep a close eye on your sex robot. Whoa. Okie dokie. Yes, of course. Everything's going to be spying on you because sensors are in everything. Even your sex bot. Your sex robot. And make sure you behave well and get a high score from that sex bot. Otherwise, you could be looking at crushed limbs. Russia is thinking about fining its citizens for being overweight. Yes, to fine large waistlines in a bid to reduce obesity, copying Japan. I never knew about this. This I learned. Uh, Japan made it illegal in 2008 for citizens between 40 and 74 years old to exceed the state prescribed limit of 85 centimeters for male waistlines, 90 centimeters for female waistlines. Maybe that's why the Japanese are not a very fat people, though I think they now are getting fatter. Uh, we here were not a fat people, but wow, obesity, boom, has really exploded in our country. Um, any way that you can come up with laws to regulate humans, control them, uh, and then fine them if they don't do exactly what you want. Look at everything that we now have that has manifested. Just a few decades ago, we didn't have foods that were poisonous and contributed to obesity, the GMOs, all of the processed foods, um, the medications, the psychiatric medications, especially that adverse effects, obesity. There are so many external factors that contribute to obesity. And if the individual does not know about all of those factors, they may very well become obese and not even understand why and then spend their life tortured by dieting, dieting, dieting. Or now, isn't it like, hey, obesity is like, um, that's one of the PC things. You can't criticize anybody who's fat and they have all of these obese shows. You know, um, fat is in, I guess. Um, an AI deity to preach Buddhism in Japanese temple. That's right. Yep. Uh, artificial intelligence all over. Japanese robot created to pre uh, preach the teachings of Buddha in colloquial language. Yes, make it easy. And the idea is that if this image, yeah, that looks like Buddha, huh? But um, if the image of Buddha speaks, teachings of Buddhism will probably be easier to understand. Oh, oh my. Getting rid of the reading, reading and 
thinking and serious consideration of what you just read and no we're going to have a robot Okay, that's scary. Um, that is very scary. You're going to be bowing to a robot. Alrighty then. Artificial intelligence. Here they are showing you. We will be bowing to artificial intelligence. What's the last one? Okay. As your phone and TV track you, political campaigns, listen in. Just want to remind you guys, your iPhones, your smartphones, your TVs, everything, your laptops. Oh, you're being tracked, followed. Digital Fence enabled Evers, who was running for governor of Wisconsin. Evers, the Evers team to push ads onto the iPhones and Androids of all those attending the meeting. Not only that, but because the technology pulled the unique identification numbers off the phones, a data broker could use the digital signatures to follow the devices home. Once there, the campaign could use so-called cross-device tracking technology to find associated laptops, desktops, and other devices to push even more ads. So they are, they are able to just take it all in. You think you own your laptop and desktop and all of these devices? Uh-uh-uh. The technology inside allows other people to grab hold of it and change it and give you what they want you to see. Welcome to the new frontier of campaign tech, a loosely regulated world in which simply downloading a weather app or game connecting to Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or powering up a home router can allow a data broker to monitor your movements with ease, then compile the location information and sell it to a political candidate who can use it to surround you with messages. We can put a pin on a building, and if you are in that building, we are going to get you. And then they can get you even if you aren't in that building anymore, but you were there, well, within the last six months. Scary, okay? Because if they don't just want to, hmm, give you an ad on your phone or laptop, but they want to get you, actually, to find out where you are, they can. Very dangerous, all of this. Think beyond what you're just reading in articles. So you have uh, somebody working at these companies and that somebody happens to be like an ex of yours and they want revenge and they're tracking you and they're finding out where you are and if you happen to go into you know a place let's say you're a recovering alcoholic and you well, you slipped and didn't want to tell anybody and everybody thinks you're sober, but you're drinking again. Uh, well, but you happen to have gone into a liquor store. My God, privacy is gone, okay? Privacy is gone. That's the world. This is the world. We all merge into just one giant human being and... Uh, I can't stand it. All links are below.